Just 300 miles northeast of Croatia in Budapest, Hungary, is a series of massive abandoned warehouses. Inside are what remains of 19 boilers, feeding eight turbines, supplying 30 kilovolts of electricity through 80-ton transformers, and a grand Art Deco-style control room in the shape of an oval, rusting away in obscurity. The generation of power itself is so simple. You take turbine that just spins around magnet inside a coil, that's essentially all it is. But then you have to put all these sort of regulations and extra things in there to make it usable. Well, that's being the transformers, the systems to make sure the turbines are going around at constant speed the whole time so you don't get interruptions. All this sort of stuff had to be worked out. And you're talking about very old technology. This was even before vacuum tubes. And they had to think of a lot of things and be ingenious with creating these things to make the AC useful. But what engineering problems did this now crumbling plant face? And why was it abandoned? In 1912, Budapest is one of the capitals of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. But to power the country's global ambitions, Authorities need to generate electricity for 880,000 people. For this tremendous task, engineers construct the groundbreaking Kellenfold Power Station. Today, we take electricity for granted. But at the turn of the 19th century, it was the new black. It was full of wonder, and its potential was limitless. At the time, this power plant rivals every other plant in the world for efficiency and high output. More than anything, the designers here want to produce not just a power plant, but a grandiose temple to electricity. However, for the engineers, executing this vision involves a risky, monumental transition. People would have their own coal and they'd be self-supporting. You know, they'd create power that they needed, you know, and that power would only just be thermal energy, right? You just, just heat, that's all you're gonna get. To then go pooling the coal together at a power station and then creating this electricity, which can then be distributed out through a network, through a grid, which then you can tap into and harness part of that energy yourself, you know, that's very different. You gotta see this as a projection of the future to everybody. There can be elements of design going into that. You're trying to get people on board. You're trying to show your nation and people around that you're forward thinking. You're entering a new era. But the engineering challenge is harnessing 38 bars of steam pressure to drive its eight giant turbines in order to produce electricity to sustain 880,000 people. To do that, workers must shovel mountains of coal and channel over 220 million liters of water from the Danube River each day into the vast furnace hall. If you want to ask about the sort of efficiency of this method of creating electricity, the, the best thing I can say is that's how we do it still. It is coal and water creating steam and turning magnets inside coils. Fundamentally, it's exactly the same from a, from a science and, and physics point of view. So that tells you we haven't come up with a better way of generating energy, even nuclear. We still heat water, turbines, it's exactly the same. Kalenfeld was always famous about how can it improve and how can you use the lit latest technology. The control room was very important for the regulation of the power plant and management of the electrical equipment. This kind of technology, transformers, switching gears, it was first in Europe, this design, but was very famous uh, during the next 20 years. This new power plant soon becomes a national treasure in Hungary and both its layout and design style are copied all over Europe. I think it's great that they tried to kind of pour design art deco, make it stunning, and, and it still looks amazing. 
I don't know how practical it was in there, the sound issues and all, all manner of things like that. But I don't see why, you know, you can't have design and function go hand in hand. Why not? But just two months after Kellenfold goes online, World War I breaks out. For years, Budapest endures the horrors of war, but the Kellenfold power plant miraculously escapes serious damage. However, 20 years later, Hungary joins the Axis powers. And during World War II, the plant becomes a prime target for Allied bombing raids. To protect people from aerial attacks, architects, engineers, and the planners implement a risky plan and build dozens of one- and two-man concrete bomb shelters all over the plant, even in the ornate control room. I really wonder about air raid shelters in the middle of a factory. Certainly, deep underground is the only one that makes sense. But the idea of putting individual shelter right in the middle of the target uh, seems to me rather strange. And it goes completely against all of the studies done in the 1920s and 30s by German engineers who were looking at possible future war and designing factories with the idea of minimizing damage and easing the repair and the firefighting systems if you were hit by an airstrike. But fortunately, this control room didn't need any protection because it had only one bomb, but on the outside. After the war, Kellenfold continues to power Hungary's growing energy supply. But due to more modern energy production technology coming online, the plant is decommissioned in 2005, after an impressive 91 years in operation. Today, even after years of decay and neglect, the glories of Kellenfold's unique Art Deco control room are still admired around the world. We need to have that sort of symbol of what was the big step at that time. We should try and keep these things where possible and keep them so that they will stand the testament of time and kind of remind us of, of how far we've come.